okay it's it's a huge it's a really big brooch medallion piece but on the back right down here it says 1993 mm class i would which suspect is that all these silver tone beads are also sterling silver we see amethyst possibly garnet because this one that looks like gold at the top <laughs> doesn't it look like gold so this is a vintage stick pin what does it say on the stick this one was one of them that I thought was potential Juliana. Looks like a butterfly, right? Like some abstract butterfly. Now, look here. Puddling, right? Figure eight puddling, where it has the soldering connected to two of them. Also, we're looking for a pin stop. It has the pin stop right there. Um, then this did test as Bakelite here. You can barely see the tobacco-y color that's on the q-tips okay you guys are going to have to bear with me this is part two dose of the jewelry antique store haul and you guys shopped with me in the last video um and then i recorded the first part of the haul this is the second part um and i actually found out so here it says nine uh, i bought nine items at a dollar 25. um it's there's actually more of a sale on top of that that was just the regular sale that they had so that was very a very nice surprise so anyways if you're new to my channel welcome my name is rachel aka lilyworks reseller here on youtube we have a facebook group we have a lot of things all going on um and I'm not doing my regular intro today because I am really sick today. I got hit with whatever is in my family. But I wanted to take the time to just get this video out, record it, because it's been a couple days between the first haul. And I also want to, like, list some of these things. So I might as well get this going. So we have, we're going to start with the lowest priced things that I got. And then I got... I don't know, one, two, three. I got four bags of stuff. So yeah, this was a pretty big haul. And again, I paid like, what was it? $389 for everything here. So if you guys imagine that last haul, just that um, Joseph of Hollywood brooch uh, could potentially sell for that much. So yay. That is why sometimes it's good to check antique stores, sometimes pay up for things that you can make a healthy profit on, and yeah, let's just get right into it. So again, I paid, I don't know, a dollar maybe for these pieces. Um, this one definitely looks like a Marvella piece. Marvella Jewelry does a lot of the faux pearl. This is hand knotted glass. Feels like a really nice quality. It has the decorated box clasp here as you guys can see which is awesome. But it's unmarked so I don't know if it's maybe an unmarked Monet and the tag fell off or what but I can research it. Otherwise this has definitely enough keywords to uh, describe this piece and Obviously, showing the box clasp in the first picture really helps. Okay, so then we have this on a leather cord, which I think I'm going to uh, take off and maybe just sell it as a brooch. Look at this gorgeous Art Nouveau look. Okay, it's, it's a huge, it's a really big brooch medallion piece. But on the back, right down here, it says 1993 MMA which is the Metropolitan, no, Met, the Metropolitan Museum of, of Arts, right? Right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen if I'm wrong. But um, Metropolitan Museum of Arts, um, they take like authentic pieces and make replicas of it. And there's a big collector's market for MMA jewelry and you can see why it's really high quality as well. So this is a super nice piece just as a brooch. And so for a dollar, you guys, you just cannot go wrong. This is an excellent, excellent piece, yay. Okay, next, 
can you guys believe I got these for like a dollar? Like, can you imagine going to the dollar store <laughs> and having vintage jewelry there? We would die. Okay, I'm not sure what this is. Is this a hair comb? Um, definitely looks like vintage, maybe 1940s. I'm not sure, but it has like a textured back right there. So, you know, like it, it definitely looks vintage and then it's like a crown. So I'm thinking it's a hair comb, possibly. I'm thinking of the Titanic hair comb <laughs> situation, but, uh, yes, yeah, so that was lovely. So it was Titanic 1920s. Um, okay, so there was that one. There's this chain. And I liked this chain because, you know, just chunky chains are in style anyway. Oh, we're missing a rhinestone that I need to replace. Uh, so chunky, chunky chains are in style anyways. But I think that this is vintage. Um, just like with how it looks with the, the encrusted fold over clasp here. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong. But I don't know. I'm thinking it's vintage. Um, so the silver tone part, or the links have the rhinestones embedded in them. And then the silver, or I'm sorry, the gold tone is just shiny. That looks very chic and interesting. So I got that one. We have this little pinky signet ring. There's an E on it. But I think it's sterling silver. Let's see. It's a little sterling. Yeah, it says sterling right in there. Uh, or is that a C? Is that an E or a C, you guys? I think that's an E, right? Um, but we can check that later. And then we have the sterling silver and turquoise chip earrings. I do pretty decently with turquoise chip. I'm not going to, like, make a ton of money on these, but... You know, $12, $15 for some butterfly turquoise chip earrings. They're, they are like new old stock. Uh, I have not even looked at these. I was just like, yes, I'm going to get these. These are awesome. Yay. Okay. So I see modernist copper cufflink set. Okay. These are so cool. Let's see. Are they marked at all? No, but there is some, like, of that intentional shadowing going on to give it dimension. Uh, these do not say, like, Matisse or Matisse Renoir, but, and also they're not, they don't feel as high quality as that copper vintage jewelry, but this is still a really nice abstract modernist set. Love that. Yay. Okay, we have some cufflinks. Ooh, these are some interesting um, hexagons, like etched hexagons. And I do love selling men's jewelry. It does well for me. Uh, so what does this say? So this is the mesh wraparound cufflink. And then look at that etching. It gives it a really nice sparkle. Sparkle and shine. Yeah, so nice. Okay, are you marked? So you want to look on either edge of the inside. So it does say Anson, which is good. Uh, that's a good brand to sell for men's jewelry. If there's like a uh, an interesting enough design to the cufflink. You don't want to just get any, uh, you know, rectangle plain cufflink by Anson. But these to me are interesting enough. They have the wraparound design and, ooh, these are just so lovely with that etching. It's like a flower, kind of. So we have those. And then these, I suspect, are sterling silver, just because of the tarnish that we can see. And then I also am suspecting that those are turquoise. So we will see, but we can definitely check to see if this is sterling silver. They are not marked, but... Yeah, they definitely look tarnished like sterling silver, and they are screwbacks, and yeah, <laughs> again, like a dollar for these, that's insane. Okay, next, next bag. Okay, the next bag says $3, so I paid a little bit less than $3 for these. Let's get into it. Of course, I see this right away. New old stock, 1928 jewelry. This is collectible. And yeah, this is on the card, so that's even better. 
Let's see if it's marked with 1928 or if we can see the swirling because most often you just can identify it by this swirling on the back and it doesn't say 1928. So there we go, we see that swirling. That is indicative of 1928 jewelry. Again, 1928 jewelry is replicas of uh, vintage and Victorian and Edwardian, even uh, Art Deco jewelry. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty with that blue. Little tiny clear uh, teardrop at the bottom. That is lovely, yay. There's that, oh, look at these Napiers, aren't they so cool? If it's an interesting Napier, you know I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I've done well with interesting Napier pieces and like the classic shiny gold tone chunky chains, I've done well with that look too. So these are like interlocking circles with faux pearls all around the outside. So this would be like a really fun addition to um, someone's like pearl set but just a little bit funkier. And it does say Napier on the back with a patent number right there. So we got those. Uh, this is, I got a couple questions already if I'm putting this out yet. This is the Carolyn Pollock that we saw while I was shopping. CP for Carolyn Pollock. It does say 925 right in the clasp. I would suspect that all these silver tone beads are also sterling silver. We see amethyst, possibly garnet. This one actually, this like rosy one, let's see, might just be some kind of like marble. Um, we have the faux pearl, or I'm sorry, the genuine pearls, the dyed pearls, I should say. Gen genuine dyed pearls all right there. And it's pretty long, let's see. Let's see how long this is. I'm definitely um, going to be listing this soon on my lilyworksreseller.com website. That's where I list everything like first that you see on the videos. So uh, I would say 30, 32 ish inches. So you could wrap this around you know, a couple times or wear it long or layer it with other fun things. So that one was a really, really nice find for $2 and something. Yes. Yay. Okay. Next we have this. This definitely looks like Norwegian, Danish, modernist pewter design. And then when we turn it over, it does say, what does it say? It says, Um, pewter, handmade, made in Norway. So this is a Norway piece. Yes, definitely be on the lookout for like handmade uh, Norwegian type pieces. I know the Ikea, the store Ikea, the, that aesthetic is very popular and a lot of it's based off of that vintage modernist Norwegian design work. So something like this is just really collectible. I'll, I'll put that there. Okay, these also, I I could suspect that they are the sterling silver. Oh my gosh, they're even prettier out of the bag. Look at how long these are. Wow, it's like the Canateal uh, filigree work. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. So this doesn't look sterling silver to me unless it's heavily rhodium plated. It's very shiny as, as compared to, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see. Oh no. I was thinking that they might, they might have been hook earrings that they converted to screw backs, but I'm looking further. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I think that these are, I do think that this came later, but I'm not sure. Um, again, unmarked, but we can test it. Definitely worth the money if these are sterling. If not, you know, I think they're still worth the money if they're not. They look very, very old, very old. Look at these twisted tassel-y things on the bottom. So it's like straight tassel, straight tassel. Wow, that is so fun. Okay, we'll put that in the to test 
area. Okay. Oh, do you guys want to do like a little unbagging with me? So it says five pairs of earrings. This also came from that same priced uh, area. So we'll see what I got. We'll see what I got for <laughs> two something. The reason I got these is because I saw these right here, these little pink lever back. So you can see the, the lever in the back right there. Lever back, pink, like rhinestone, crystal-y things, gunmetal gray. So we have that. But then on the back, we do see the swirling, which is the 1928. So these within itself are worth uh, getting. So I'm happy with those. And then what else? Oh, I do see these bamboo matte gold tone hoops. I've sold these so many times. They're just kind of like a staple vintage chic look. I'm gonna look around the post to see if it's marked like Monet or anything. Um, it's not marked, but interestingly enough, the post is gold itself. So sometimes when an earring post is gold tone instead of silver tone, I would just double check to make sure that they're not like gold. <laughs> um, yeah, the I can see like a little bit of a higher quality to these at the end here, but I can definitely test these to see uh, later on. Okay, we have some, just this just one, yeah, one hook leaf earring dangle. These feel really nice and they're an excellent shape. Again, it has a gold tone hook, but I don't think these are gold just by looking at them, but I could be wrong. <laughs> they might be gold. They might just be an excellent shape. We have those. We have these uh, swirl enamel like geometric. Oh, they're, Mo oh, they're Monet. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have two absolutely yeses from that little uh, bag. So that was nice. And then we have some silver tone hoops. This one has like a gold tone post. Interesting. I don't know. Cause usually it's like the other way around where it'll be gold tone with a silver post. All right, I'm going to take my magnet and see if these are magnetic. Um, not really. Let's see if I take that off. I mean, I could test these to see if they are anything, but yeah, so that's interesting. All right, I'm going to put the Monet in the not test pile. <gasps> these are one of my favorite things that I picked up. Okay. Okay. Are we excited? Even though I'm so sick, I have my tea here. <laughs> my cup that my best friend got me for Christmas. I have my orange blossom tea in there. And then look at these amazing, amazing fruit jewelry. I think fruit jewelry just by itself does well. Of course, we see that there's a lot of verdigree happening back there, but I'm just going to clean that up. And then these berries are glass. These like blackberry things, maybe mulberries. Let's see if it's marked anything on the back. No, but it's a little Demi Purr clip-on earring set and looks a lot like, looks older, maybe 1940s-ish. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite things for sure. And I really, really need to clean that up. Um, yes, really need to clean that up. All right, here is another piece that I want to test because that looks like gold at the top. <laughs> Doesn't it look like gold? So this is a vintage stick pin. What does it say on the stick? It says PSCO or something like that. And then nothing on this part. And then this looks like it's a garnet, prong set garnet. But you guys, we can like, we cannot go wrong with this, these prices. These prices, we can take chances and learn a lot of things. <laughs> 
So I'm excited about that one. And then we have, ooh, look at these earrings. Look at these bezel set earrings. Okay, if you see bezel set jewelry, you know, take another look. Don't be afraid to take a chance because, yeah, these feel like crystal or glass. Uh, Swarovski does stuff like this. Goldette does stuff like this. Um, I know Janine just picked up some Monet bezel set, or a, a Monet bezel set necklace. All right, I don't see any markings on these whatsoever, uh, but not in the backing either. Aren't these just glorious, excellent condition? Look at these drop crystals. I would not be surprised if these were Swarovski. They really look like it with that clear um, crystal cuts. Lovely. Okay, what are these? Oh, these are so interesting. I love artisan jewelry. Love, love, especially the like brass and mixed metal artisan jewelry. Love. Um, so we have a fish with a textured brass, textured copper background, green fish with these little dangle charms. And most of the, most often these are not marked. Um, so this also needs to be cleaned, but these are gorgeous. Okay, oh, we have the piano going now. We have this piece here, it goes this way. So we have the multi-strand faux pearl choker with this lovely big faux pearl, uh, I don't know, choker pendant thing, <laughs> statement thing. And no mark again, and then also no mark on the fold over clasp. But this look, let me just put it on my bust here. This, this just looks so classic, very, uh, Princess Diana, in my opinion. Let me just show you up here. There we go. Right? Isn't that gorgeous? That is so pretty. Okay, so we got that one. That one I would just have to use a lot of keywords to sell that specific necklace there. Okay, next we have a tangle. <laughs> and this was tangled up in other necklaces. The reason I got it is be, oh, okay, it's starting to loosen up. I don't wanna pull it too tightly because it is very delicate. Faux pearl, and then we see the crown trifari hang tag here. So it's the T with that little owl looking guy at the top, or maybe like a mask, Phantom of the Opera screaming. <laughs> I don't know we all see different things but definitely doesn't look like a tea with a crown in it I don't know <laughs> how that happened but uh yeah so if it was Talbot it would just be a hanging tea and this one that looks more like an open mouth guy is uh the crown trifari which is very hot and desirable for me at least I've been doing really well selling it oh this is so long Oh, this could probably be tripled. <gasps> okay, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna see how long this is. You guys can't even see the end in the camera, but it is very, very long. Okay, let's see. We're all the way over there. So 20, it's at least 28, 29. Um, oh my gosh, this is almost a 60 inch long little dainty necklace yay so what is that flapper length or opera length okay next this is not precious metal not precious stones but again it's that old bar pin look with that emerald green glass on the gold tone it looks really awesome yes got that one we have this monet which i love picking up monet at a good price it usually does well for me Monet tends to sell well on its own. It does well in, in, you know, vintage bundling in my store. Monet is right there. I think these are just the faux pearls. 
love those i see potential sterling silver let's see oh and it's a guilloche so the guilloche enameling is where it has like that really pretty sometimes wavy texturing swirling texturing underneath that enamel and so how they make enamel is they heat up i believe they heat up like uh glass dust and then they fire it to make enamel so when you see like texturing behind it that's called guilloche enameling which is you know collectible and it has a blue flower it's kind of like a short bar pin it does have a c clasp so older and it has words let's see if i can see the words all right i do see sterling i see genuine oh it says genuine cloisonne on it you guys Right at the top, it says genuine, I have never seen, I've never seen jewelry say that ever. Genuine cloisonne, interesting. And then some other marks are in there that I cannot make out. Wow, that is really interesting. So you guys, now we know that this is genuine cloisonne. Wow, that, and so cloisonne is where they have the, I guess it's like brass wiring. And then they fill in the black brass wiring with the enamel. So we see that. Okay, and then I believe, let me see if I have. So I believe that this right here is what's considered champlive or champlevé or however you say it. Where it has these raised bits and then they fill it in. I believe. <clears throat> So we have that. All right, next we have this. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, there we go. There we go. We see it says nine two five right in the clasp. Yay! And then these are not real pearls, but these are genuine shell. We have the tiger's eye. We have these like green stones. I'm not sure what those are. Crystal. And all of this is like gold over sterling. It's very delicate, lovely, high quality feeling necklace. High, high quality. So yay, I'm excited for that one as well. And then we have this uh, like rice pearl and garnet. And a lot of times these beads, a lot of times these beads here would be like gold. I guess I could test these end ones here. That would be easier to test. And this might have been like a restring, maybe not a restring, but a re-clasp because the clasp um, looks, looks maybe like it wasn't original to it, but that's okay. Uh, I feel like there might have been a barrel clasp or something on here. And so uh, I do love, I do well with this kind of necklace and I love the little garnets in there. So I guess I can test that as well. So we have my little testing pile over here. Get these bags and let's get another jewelry bag. Woo! Okay, so a lot of these we had seen in the first video. You guys saw this fish. I think there's one listed for $49.99, I believe, or $59.99. This is a crown trifari fish brooch and he looked, she, he or she, <laughs> looks so stinking adorable. I love the lips on the fish situation. <laughs> so cute. Okay, these are clip-on. They say $2. They are marked from 4 They look like the, again, antler horn slices. You can actually see through these slices and then we can test them for silver they actually feel more like a pewter but i mean you never know there's again these have verdigris and you know what i am okay with cleaning verdigris on high quality jewelry at antique stores if i'm getting a really good price now if i were a vendor and i wanted to get top dollar don't leave the verdigris on there that's for sure um yeah so then we have these puffy clip-ons. We know, remember these were half off, so these were $1.50, but they look like oval apple pies. They are matte gold. They have like a little bit of 
uh, twisted rope going on and this I would say quilted in my title because I don't know designers do that a lot where they use a lot of the quilted pattern so I might say puffy quilted in my description and I don't see anything on this earring sometimes so I don't see any name on this earring but sometimes designers will put their name on one earring and not both so I'm just double checking to see if there is and there's not um, again like I, I have a lot of questions in a lot of my videos about cleaning and again if you want to clean jewelry if it's like like something like this where you don't really need to clean it I wouldn't clean it um, but if it's something that has like dirt or tarnish or whatever and you can clean it I use an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner I'll have the link down in the description of the video I use purple jewelry cleaner with a toothbrush which is right here I use this really often and then for verdigris you can use ketchup or vinegar to neutralize the verdigris and stop its growth because that could start to damage and discolor uh, jewelry pieces and then the verdigris actually starts spreading to other pieces that it is around so yeah so that's those we saw this this was an exciting find so six dollars at I think 25% off let's take it out ooh that enameling is even prettier when we take it out do you see how it's like pulled enameling and then it looks like they're is water on this flower it does say the E pearl for Irwin pearl Irwin pearl costume jewelry is higher end so you can get a little bit more money for the Irwin pearl pieces and that is a B I think that that rich red that Avon does and it's on here I think that's one of the prettiest colors of enamel on jewelry that really beautiful red okay next what are you? It says Anne Klein necklace. Oh, it says eight fifty, and I believe we this one was a half off boost. So we have the vintage Anne Klein, and then I believe AKI is also for Anne Klein, where it will say AKI. But here's the lion head right there. And then on the back, it does say incline. We have the full pearl heavy chain. Like this would even be a good chain for a chain belt. There's that one. Then we did see these modernist dangle earrings. Let's just take them out because they are outrageous. Space age, fun. So this vendor put great Halloween earrings yeah these are these have a lot <laughs> more things going for it than great Halloween earrings that's for sure so they do they say anything they're taped on here so we'll just see if they're if they say anything no and they're kind of puffy um so I don't think that they're like sterling silver or anything they don't really feel like it to me but these are in fact fabulous <laughs> they're so awesome isn't that fun okay next I don't, I don't need to take these out we just see that they are the faux carved cameo looking thing wedgwood looking type of uh, situation and we have a dove on the blue background these are Avon I paid like a dollar fifty for these around $1.50 and they're just sweet little Avon bread and butter okay these earrings I thought were fantastic and I'm taking a risk with these because you know artisan glass jewelry pendants don't really do that well and so I've never done the earrings before where it's that same look with earrings but there I just I can't help it <laughs> I have like a thing for these beautiful glass looking things and then these are studs yep they're stud earrings and they have the adventuring uh like sparkling copper coppery 
glass in there. If you guys can see the sparkle. And these were three dollars at like 25% off. So not like a huge risk by any means, but I've never sold something like that before. So in that regard, it is a risk. We have the Chico's ring. Yes, yes, yes. It looks like there's gold stone. It's a gold stone Chico's ring. $3 with 25% off. This says Chico's right there. And I actually don't have a Chico's close by me. It looks like it could be adjustable. Anyways, I don't have a Chico's close by me, so when I go to Appleton, I shop at that Chico's and I do buy clothes for myself. Why? Because it is high quality clothes. I feel like uh, people my age are missing out on high quality clothing <laughs> because I'm 32 and uh, I feel like people my age shop at Target and Amazon. But little do they know that places like Chico's and Talbot's and Soft Surroundings and um, what is the other one? Um, Sun something. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, really high quality cl clothing and boho style, which I love. Okay. We have this. What does it say? It says $8.00. Um, cloisonne necklace. Okay, let's just let's just look at how beautiful this is. You guys already know that I love my cloisonne. So this on on here it says butterfly. Hmm, what does that mean? So I push it. That is interesting. It says butterfly right there. Uh, lovely. Okay, and then I love my cloisonne type of jewelry. And then this looks like possibly angel skin coral with it. But I'm going to have to look into that a little bit further. But it is like a deep red with the cloisonne uh, pink flowers, orange flowers, green. Lovely. So, so pretty. Okay, then what do these say? Oh, we saw these. These are the Sterling Silver Sneakers. Those are fun. And they do say 925 on the bottom of the textured sneaker. I'm trying to think, who would be the buyer for something like this? For like sneaker earrings. And don't say teachers because we can't say all funky weird jewelry is for teachers. <laughs> or like novelty jewelry, I should say. Um, because when I was a teacher, I'm going to be honest with you, most teachers shop at Target. <laughs> Like, seriously. Um, and have that, like, really, like, basic, you know, style. But, and that there's nothing wrong with that style, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it, like I think in theory everyone thinks that teachers all dress up in, like, really fun clothes for the kids, which I totally did. I, like, had a pizza pencil skirt and fun things like that, but for the most part, that's that's usually not the vibe. All right, shell necklace, and this is $5. This totally looks like it's sterling silver with little turquoise chunks. And let's put it on our bust here. Ooh, look at how pretty. That sits so nice. It's a little like wire wrap thing. Yeah, love that. So we'll test that as well. My testing pile is getting pretty big here. Then we have these earrings, they're marked Marvella, and they're the, you know, AB coated crystals. So these are at least 1953 and up. I believe that AB coating came out in 1953. So they're not older than that, but they sure are beautiful. And these say they were $5. They're in excellent shape. So when I'm saying excellent, like vintage shape, yeah, this is what I mean right here. So lovely. What does this say? A dollar. Ooh, these are the ones. There's two of them in here for a dollar. So let's see. I did not even open this yet. So let's see what we got. Okay, I'm really curious about these. 
Ooh, that is so pretty. It's like a little glass dewdrop. Oh, I love those. I have never seen anything like that. That is so fun. Let's see if they're marked at all. Not that I can see, but I'm kind of obsessed with that look. I don't think it would be rock crystal. I really think it's glass. But it totally reminds me of the pools of light and how pools of light, the original pools of light were made where the quartz were tumbled, tumbled, tumbled in the ocean. And then the, then you would find them and they would be balls. Um, and they wouldn't drill the ball. So they would actually encase these pools of light in like wire and stuff. And so now we have like replica pools of light that are made with quartz. I thought that was a little fun fact. This one has a skinnier drop thing than this one, but love those. I'm obsessed. Yay. Maybe I'll put them in the testing pile. And then these, ooh, these also have filigree. Filigree screw backs. Um, not marked. I don't think our sterling silver, but you never know. We'll see. Okay. Moving on. What does this one say? $8 designer bracelet. It says sterling mark. Okay, so that's a good sign. And then this feels like dyed howlite. And then we have the natural chunky shells. Uh, does look like sterling silver. And the designer is, it says Donna Dressler. So we're going to look that up. I think I, I think I was seeing comps around $40 for something like this. But again, a nice high quality bracelet. Designer, I'm not sure, I haven't looked it up. But we will see. We have the Napier clip-ons for $1.97 with a percentage off. Staple, We ha I did get the puffy, I don't know, they kind of look like golf balls. <laughs> Puffy gold tone, button earrings, less than a dollar, stud. Yeah. Okay, what is this? Why did I get this? This is so cool. It looks like a pine cone. What are we seeing? Okay, let's see. Does it say anything? Yes, it does. And then let's see. It says sterling trim pine cone question mark. $9 with a percentage off. It says CR Co 12 karat gold filled sterling trim. So this is a gold filled with like maybe sterling on the pine cone. I see that it says CR Co. Is this Black Hills gold? Because sometimes I think it's something Co in Black Hills gold jewelry. I'm actually going to take my handy dandy Google Lens here and Google Lens it to see if anything pops up. All right, so we see different different things going on here. So one says Dixel, D-I-X-E-L-L, -L, and it doesn't look exactly the same, but we have like the same thing going on. We have another Dixel pine cone. This one says SKL, which I don't know about that. All right, so nothing is showing up as far as like Black Hills Gold um, right away, but I can definitely do more research, see what that's all about. Then we got these carved flowers. These look like carved, oh, let's just see. If they're cold, then they're not gonna be the carved celluloid. Oh, we have a couple earrings in here. So a dollar for two pairs of earrings. Yay, I didn't even know that those are in there. And then these look very, very, very old, like 1930s-ish. Oh my gosh, maybe earlier. I'm not even certain, but I'm looking to see if there's any like cross hatching because if there's cross hatching, like cross hatching, you know, like hatching, in the material itself, then it would be carved ivory, and we can't sell carved ivory. 
that these might just be bone because they are not lightweight. They're not warm or they're, they are a little bit cold. So these are not celluloid. So I don't know, I'll probably Google lens these and they'll probably pop up for me. So we'll see what those are. And then these are just some leaf screw backs. Don't think they say anything. So yeah, like a textured dainty leaf screw back. And these, let's take these out, stapled clothes. These were a dollar. And I got these because I think that they look like French jet. So let's see. Oh, and they're long. Ooh, come out. And they're all tangled, yay, okay. All right. Ooh, it's a double. Look at that, you guys. Oh, these are so pretty. Yeah, French jet. Again, I don't see a mark or anything back there, but that's okay because I did not get them because I thought they were marked. They're really, really, really pretty. And yay. Okay. I have this. You guys remember what this was? I have this. You guys might remember what this was, but I'll show these at the end. Um, those were the two like hard goods type thing that I got. All right. So this bag was the three for five dollars. And I did check some of these pieces came from other booths. So eh, I might have paid a little bit more than I was supposed to, but that's okay. Like I got really great deals all around. So like these two were supposed to be a dollar with 20% off. So like 80 cents. Um, but they counted them in here. So two loons. And this one's actually a little bit higher quality. It's painted all around. And are you signed? No, sometimes you can put like artist signed. This one looks hand painted though. And then there's this one that's wood. And this one is signed wheat. So two lo loon brooches there. This one I got because in my, um, my wearable jewelry, but not like I'm going to be listing it um, online jewelry, I have earrings and necklace that looks just like this with this textured de textured design. I'm really confused by the whole thing because this looks so like shiny and stark, but inside is like tarnished and very old looking. So I don't even know how to date this. There's even like floral patterning going on in that brass work. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Look at that. So it's like a very stark contrast going on. No idea. <laughs> um, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to be putting this as a purr. And then once we get our new website up and running, I'm going to put this as like a set on there. And so I got that one. That was interesting. I have no idea about it. This one was one of them that I thought was potential Juliana. Looks like a butterfly, right? Like some abstract butterfly. Now, look here. Puddling, right? Figure eight puddling, where it has the soldering connected to two of them. Also, we're looking for a pin stop. It has the pin stop right there, where if we open it, it has that little stop right there. Uh, this is all looking like yes as far as Juliana goes because puddling would connect two or three, one, two, three together, I think. Then we have another puddle going on here. So I'm going to post this one to the Is It Juliana Facebook group. People usually, you know, on, it's not called Is It Juliana. I think it's called Juliana Jewelry Book or something like that. But they usually get back to me pretty fast. So yay for that one. Uh, we got these were like one of the biggest scores of the shopping trip. And oh my gosh, are they high quality? <laughs> are they in really great shape? Yes, they are. 
These are the Scaparellis. Do you guys remember? Are they both signed? Yes, they are. They're both signed at the bottom. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? We paid like a dollar something for these. <gasps> we are so, I'm so lucky. I am so blessed. I'm so lucky here. These are a definite be on the lookout for Scaparelli. I sold one Scaparelli earring for $20 and it was just one and it was not in the best condition. So you guys, <laughs> Scaparelli earrings, yes. Okay, this, this looks like gold to me, you guys. It really does. Let's see if it says anything. Yeah, this looks like it could be gold. <laughs> it really does. All right, what does it say? It says sterling? No, what does it say? It says something right here. Let me get my little, um, a little magnifying glass here that I have. Again, I have like all my products that I use listed under, it's, uh, if you click on the description of the video, you would be able to see all my Amazon links. Okay, so it says 120th 12K gold filled. So this is a little gold filled brooch. So it's gold on the outside. That's why it looks like a rich gold tone. So we have that one. I did save the scrimshaw. I don't know. I feel like I feel a little bit compelled to buy things like this just because it's made from natural uh, whales, bone and stuff. And instead of it going to a landfill, I want it to be rescued. Uh, I don't know. I just have a thing about it, but it's a lovely ship and a lot of scrimshaw type of items are things to do with the ocean and the sea. And yeah, we see the ship there. Sometimes it could be whales. Sometimes it could be seals. Uh, sometimes it can be signed. So this one is not, but it is double-sided. Let's see. Did we think that this was a gold-filled necklace? Yeah, I believe it's a gold-filled. There's like little tiny words there that say gold-filled. Um, so yeah, I might do something where I just lot up scrimshaw items in my, in the new platform again, just to go to a collector who would like appreciate them because obviously we're not, <laughs> we're not about, uh, you know, taking the lives of animals to just make these like art things. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And then we have copper jewelry set. I love my enamel on copper jewelry. To me, this is a big score. Like, I love this. And so we see that, like, there's the copper on both sides here on this. I'm sorry. There's enamel on both sides of this copper green swirl. So it looks like we have the clip-on earring, or no, screwback earrings, and tangled into a pendant. So very MCM, I don't know, it's, it, it's not considered arts and crafts movement because that was more during like, I think Art Nouveau and Art Deco, but uh, definitely like an arts and crafts type item. Okay, this is really cute. So we have these glass leaves and then this little peach, like, <laughs> what is this? What kind of stone is this? It's a natural stone that they turned into a peach. So that's really cute. Fruit jewelry does pretty well. So got him or her. We have these. Ooh, and they're marked VA. So what is VA? Veronica, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, these are bezel set. These are like some funky charm, maybe lucky. There's some horseshoes going on. VA, I am curious. I want to see if Google Lens would show me anything. And you might be asking me, Rachel, why don't you, why didn't you just Google Lens things before you bought them? Because I don't know why. Well, I know the why, reason why for a lot, but antique stores and a lot of thrift stores just, uh, they, they, their reception is terrible and you can't have reception 
in there basically. A lot of time it could be because of the metal roof that's on a lot of the buildings. Sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere. So, all right, so I didn't get anything from Google Lens here. I'm going to just type in VA clip on earrings and see if that comes up as anything. So we have VA charm earrings, which mine is very much like a charm. So it says general Bonaparte charm. So that doesn't tell me anything because I think that's what's on the charm right there. Um, VA, is it Victoria and Albert Museum? Let's see what those look like on the back here. Um, Victoria and Albert. So there is V and A. So maybe it's Victoria and Albert Museum. Let's keep looking. V, A, V, A. I might, if, I might, uh, just add in some words here, like V, A, charm clip on, because that seems to be common. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else. Otherwise, I might filter my results to, to show more pre-owned things or vintage, maybe. So let's see, v VA Charm. Yeah, the only one that comes up for the charm is that one. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more digging, a little bit more research, but these are so fun. Fun, fun. Okay, then next we have, oh no! I see a little loose bead in there. That is sad. Uh oh. What are we? What are we getting ourselves into? Oh no 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 no! Look. Oh my gosh. There's two. They and they are glass. So there's art glass mixed with like acrylic. Okay, I'm holding this for dear life. <laughs> Uh, sometimes that's what happens in in like bins where you're sorting stuff is things start to get loose so this was on there okay I'm just gonna put this back in the bag I don't know maybe what I'll do again is because I don't have a lot of time to fix things sometimes I do but a lot of times I don't so I might put this again on the website as like a craft or repair type of a situation and someone who loves this kind of thing would my, wouldn't mind spending, you know, $6 or $5 for to just repair something that's really beautiful like this. So that is what I would might be considering if I don't want to repair it myself. Okay, more artisan earrings. Ooh, and these are clip-on. Oh, and they say bear, S-F, B-A-E-R. I think I looked that up. This feels like a little onyx. Um, stone. We have this little stone at the bottom. Cute. SF Bear. We have these earrings. Let's see. Ooh, the Thermoset Moon Glow. Again, this looks like gold. It looks like 10 karat gold. Let's, let me just show you up close. Do you see that look? That totally looks like 10 karat gold, older earrings. And are these earrings? I'm gonna see if, if they can go in my ear right now. Like slide on. I know Judith McCann does these like interesting wing back. Yeah, they do go on your ear and they don't really fall off. Well, I mean, unless you're doing like the Tough Mudder or something, I don't know. But I'm gonna test these because yeah, these look like that rich gold tone look that makes me question. And then our last piece of jewelry again is the white enamel. I had a couple people confirm that white enamel was around the 60s into the 70s. That's when it was very popular. We have the spring ring clasp. No name on there. There's like little hearts on the ends of the cross. Open work cross. Again, ooh, are we seeing maybe a name right there? No, I thought maybe we were. 
Um, sometimes Hedison or Hetty jewelry does the enamel work and sometimes that that enamel maker's mark looks a little clumpy and weird so uh, if I see that clumpy weird looking enamel mark I will take a look and ask myself is and I will ask myself is it the Hattie or Hedison jewelry so I have that one put those in I'm not testing those all right I'm gonna open these for you real quick you guys <laughs> there's more jewelry in there stop <laughs> I thought that these were just the hard goods pieces but what do we have here what do we have does this not look like micro mosaic tiling on a big light brooch right you guys have you ever seen we are going to test that for big light uh but it definitely looks like big light it is a fur clip i believe i don't think it's a dress clip so it says clip micro clip mosaic twenty dollars with some kind of percentage off uh, I've never seen anything like this. If I don't see anything like this online, I'm just going to price it. It's going to be the Wild West out there. Like, $400. <laughs> just whatever I feel like it. That, you know, that's how I, that's how I roll. Okay, so we have that one. We have these Kramer earrings. Oh my gosh. So these, I think, are these Sabrina glass? Um, these little teardrop shaped ones see so these were ten dollars gorgeous let's see oh and they're in excellent condition look at that oh they're so beautiful um oh no maybe not it almost looks like amberina could that be a thing in in rhinestones so amberina like glass bowls and things like that have the orange that's like um it's like an ombre into the red. And I see that in this rhinestone. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty. Oh my gosh, yes. These are yes all day, yes, 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 yes. So maybe even like $8 for these. Oh my word, those are so gorgeous. We got this. Okay, so I pass up a lot of BSK jewelry, but I have never seen BSK jewelry look so beautiful in my life. Look at this. Look at this big honking piece. Do you know like when you're watching Titanic and they like are like the heart of the ocean and it's just like this big huge faceted blue piece? That's what that looks like. Um yes. So what does it say? Yeah, it's a BSK. So with BSK jewelry we, you know, a lot of like just plain gold tone brooches, leaves, things like that are BSK, but I have never, never seen a BSK set like this ever. That is so gorgeous. I don't know what BSK stands for. Maybe I'll put it up on the screen, but wow. And then we have the matching earrings. So we have a Demi Perer here. Again, you can see right through it absolutely stunning let's see if these are marked so if we ever came across them yeah these are not marked you guys so if you ever came across earrings like this and you'd be like I have no idea what in the world this part this piece is marked this piece is unmarked oh those are so beautiful and then we have this I don't know what stone that is. I've been learning more about like Safaret, Dragon's Breath, uh, from Sunday Bobbles. Oh my gosh. If you guys want to watch, just have like a teachable moment, go watch her channel. She has a natural gift of speaking to people. I do not possess that great of a gift. She is just so good at because she does it live. She will go through a presentation, go through it live. She's so eloquent. She's so knowledgeable. She does her research so well before her videos. And she totally strikes a chord with me because she gives us homework at the end of her videos. 
Uh, yes. And then she goes through listings like these are the errors that we see in these listings. So I've been learning a little bit more. This one says purple $18. I suspect that this is sterling silver bar bar pin. Um, looks very art deco and I I mean it looks like moon glow ish but I'm wondering if it might be something a little bit different. I'm just going to research it a little bit more and then it, again it has the C clasp right here. Lovely. And then last jewelry piece is this. Okay what are we looking at here? It looks Mexico. It looks like a moon maybe. Um, I definitely think it's some abstract art up for interpretation. And then are you marked anything? No, but this piece was resoldered. The pin was resoldered back onto it. And let's see, it says $12 for pin. I definitely think it's sterling silver and it definitely looks meaningful and artisan to me. So we're going to test that. Obviously, most glorious polished abalone shell ever. It is stunning. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh my gosh. And then we have the Spain little basket. Marked Spain. It looks like Italy to me. And we got it for less than a dollar, I think. No, we got it for a dollar. It was two half off. Little flower in there. Not perfect condition, but a lot of like Italy, Italian uh, pottery. Spanish pottery is a little bit more rustic cottage look anyways. Like I see a little like thing right here, but that might have just been there with how they made it and how it dried. Um, yeah, so we have those pieces. All right, I'm going to test and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have all my scratches for what I'm thinking is potential sterling silver here lined up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines here on my stone. I have my 18 karat gold testing acid that I like to use better than the sterling silver testing acid because it shows up better on the black stone for me. All right, I'm seeing some already that are showing up as a bright blue. So this piece that's pretty heavy is sterling silver here. That one is a yes. For sterling, these are sterling silver screw backs. This one is not testing as sterling silver, which is interesting. I might, you know, retest some of the bits um, here. This one also is very lightly right here testing for sterling. It might just be heavily rhodium plated, um, which you have to get through the rhodium plating to get to the sterling silver. Uh, and the rhodium is there so it doesn't tarnish. So that one I suspect is sterling silver. This I might have to re redo again because it might have like scratched the wire which the wire itself might might not be sterling silver but the beads might be so this one's still possible also some of these look more like sterling and then this one is not coming up as sterling either again it might be rhodium plated or it just might not be sterling silver uh i don't think it's platinum or white gold I don't think. Um, then this did test as Bakelite here. You can barely see the tobacco-y color that's on the Q-tip. So if it was like um, not Bakelite, it would stay like this pink there on the back from the Simichrome polish. Once you put the polish on the Q-tip and you rub it in an inconspicuous spot, it starts showing up like a tobacco-y um, brownish color, then it's positive for Bakelite. I looked this piece, like, I looked at Bakelite and Micro Mosaic, uh, seems to be around the 1940s for something like this, and there's not a lot out there. Like, there's some screwback earrings, I think, for like 120 out there. There was a set that sold that had this type of, um, 
thing in like a three piece set sold for $180 uh, but not this color this what color would this be hmm <laughs> we shouldn't say baby poop right <laughs> like what it's not spinach bakelite I don't know so yeah for $20 this was a really well I mean less than $20 so this was a really nice score I could potentially look at the receipt wherever that went um, because I think that they did mark a lot of the things like they typed it out so that were singles like this so they might have put micro mosaic and then I can see the actual price on it but I have still more to test here so I'm gonna wipe this off flip it over and then test um, more things to see if they are potentially gold or sterling silver okay I have my next items lined up that I think are potentially sterling silver again. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay, so what do we see? These are no. These are no. This is a no. Um, these are a no. And then I re scratched this. This one is the bottom line right here. This one is a yes, so I had to get past the rhodium plating a little bit. So that just goes to show that if it's really shiny, marked sterling silver, or you have a high. Um, you think that there's a high chance that it could be sterling silver and it's just not testing, you might just have to scratch down a little deeper. So this one is sterling silver. Might have to do that with this. And then this one is marked sterling silver. I tested the toggle, not, not testing a sterling silver. So I'm either gonna have to scratch it deeper or it might be saying that the other beads are sterling silver. Well, I don't know, we'll see. And then these do test as sterling silver. So I have some potential gold things here. So what I do with potential gold is I have different acids for those. I usually start off with the 10K, which is the lowest here. And I see if any of the lines hold. And with the 10K especially, I give it a few minutes because for some reason, even, even if it's not even like, you know, a gold color, 10K just can sometimes take a while to disappear if it does. So then if it's holding, you know, for 10K, I might do a line for the 14K and then working our way up to 18K. Again, things could be 12K. I don't have a 12K acid, but if it's really holding for a long time and then somewhat holding for 14K, I might say it tests as 10K, possibly 12K. That's just been the way I've been doing it. So I'm gonna clear this off and then test these here for us. Okay, so with this, not even going to test it for gold. After I looked at the scratch mark, the bead itself was not gold underneath, so I don't think that this is gold. And that might mean that potentially that might be the right hook, but I, maybe not. All right, so we're going to see with 10K, one, two, three, four. So we're going to test for one two, three, four. All right, and I'll give it a couple minutes to see if anything bleeds through. See, all four of them are holding with 10K, all four. So I might have to give it a couple minutes to see if it holds. Otherwise, I can just try 14K right away, see if any of them disappear right away. Usually uh, with 14K, if it's not gold, 14 karat gold, it disappears right away. So, let's see. So yeah, all of them except for this disappeared right away. So we'll give it a couple minutes. 
Again, this this one has not disappeared for 10, like literally none of them have disappeared for 10K. Um, yeah, we'll give it a couple more minutes. All right, so this one disappeared. I didn't think it was, um, but disappeared. Uh, this one has not yet. So I'm going to have to see if they did anything like moon or thermoset in 10 karat gold because even like this like bottom looking hand done thing totally reminds me of the caps that they put on genuine pearls that are 10k uh yeah this little handmade piece so that one has potential this one is holding for both 14k and 10k i'm a little suspicious so this one will have to do more research uh, because I feel like if it was, it would be marked with just how this jewelry piece is made. So this one I'm unsure of, but I feel a little bit more confident with this one because this one is holding at 10K and it looks like it's 10K and a lot of times they would put like a 10K top not on a... Uh, gold pin itself so we can see with the presidium uh to see if this is a garnet because if it's just glass then i might be like hmm, maybe it's not gold not to say that they can't use gold with glass just not it's just not common all right so there we go presidium dun 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 and I'm gonna hold the pen onto the presidium and or onto the stone. And it's at the garnet tourmaline, yeah, garnet tourmaline eyelight right at the top end of it. Otherwise it's in the tanzanite aqua, also in the chrysophrase emerald nephrite. So you know it doesn't give you a for sure this is what it is. You know, you have to use deductive reasoning. So to me, this looks like a garnet, but I could also see if any of these other stones have this same color and just uh, go based off of that. We also have some pretty good knowledgeable um, ladies in our Facebook jewelry group, the Lily Works Facebook group, uh, jewelry group, that can probably help pinpoint it a little bit more. But this one is, is a definite score. So yay. All right, you guys, I'm going to wrap up here. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, you know, hit that subscribe button. And as always, make sure you're out there thrifting so you guys can live generously. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. I want to take a moment to give a huge thank you to all the Patreon members. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me that you guys want to support this channel. And if you guys saw anything from the video that you want to buy, you can go to lilyworksreseller.com, click on the jewelry collection on the website, and you can purchase things that you had seen right from the video. Also, if you want to see what I use for my business, you can click on the description below my YouTube videos. And as always, you can click on this link to check out more videos from the channel. And also be sure to subscribe. Bye guys.